My name's Andy Burnham. I'm the Member of Parliament for Lee, uh, Shadow Health Secretary and former Chair of Supporters Direct. I'm here today because I've got a huge affection for this organisation, uh, spreading those cooperative values uh, into our national game, reconnecting football with its, uh, with its roots. Uh, and I want to see um, the co-op principle grow and grow in football over the rest of this century. So I'm here today to send that message out clearly. We need to see clubs owned by their fans, not by random individuals from around the world. We want clubs that uh, know their communities, are in touch with their communities and, and uh, are running the interests of their supporters. So uh, that's why I'm here at St George's Park and uh, hopefully somebody was listening to what I had to say. I think that um, clubs should have more representation and um, be owned by supporters. They're the ones who care for the club. They'll be here now, they're there in the past and they'll be there in the future. Individuals may come in and take over their clubs but not necessarily have the interests of that club at heart. Um, I think going forward it's, a, it's the future really for clubs to survive and we should be looking at other models at, overseas and particularly Germany and about how their structures are and ensure that clubs are well um, run so there is a future for them. For too long a lot of football clubs have had a position whereby uh, there is one person or a group of people who own the football club and they may give very generously to the football club but ultimately um, they, there will come a time for them where they don't want to be involved anymore and it's the position they leave the football club in uh, and it was said by um, uh, Mr Bernstein today about chairmen and boards go but fans will always be there and if fans own a club then there will always be fans for the club and fans have an emotional commitment to a football club that probably people who actually have to try and run it don't and as long as that's managed in the right way then that's what will support a club and it's transitioning from this single ownership model to a community ownership model um, is, is the biggest challenge for us. It's a very difficult uh, thing to do. Too many clubs in this country have, have grossly overspent. Uh, too much money leaks out of clubs in uh, rather large payments to all sorts of people. Um, but if the fans are actually controlling that and, and doing it properly, and making sure that money isn't wasted, then I see no reason why it shouldn't be a long-term thing for a lot of us. I think the real strength of supporters' trusts is that they are cooperatives. They have cooperative principles and values, and that is really the route to sustainability in, a, in what is basically an unstable industry like uh, football. So we've had a lot of uh, support from the co-op movement uh, in the work that Supporters Direct does. We're very grateful for that and it really is one of our strengths that Supporters Direct is a cooperative of its member trusts and the member trusts are themselves cooperatives and they bring those cooperative principles into football which is uh, very helpful for the club. Well I, I think we need to look at, at business regulation uh, in terms not just of fair finance but also of investment in uh, cooperative ventures and so on. I, th I think investment is probably the big issue along with, with regulation um, and along with a, with a change of attitude. Um, you know, People have seen that in other areas of the economy such as banking um, a speculative approach and a top-down approach doesn't work and it doesn't work in football or entertainment industries either so I think that's the big change that needs to take place and, and there's something about the cooperative ideal as part of that which is not just an ideal but actually is a practical way of working and bringing everybody on board um, businesses that end up being run just by small elites benefit only those elites if people want to have uh, a future in football together then they have to take ownership that's a very important part of that if you look how successful German football is both on the pitch and off it um, if you look at how affordable it is for the fans then really that's the model that a lot of countries need to follow um, the fact that German football clubs can't be taken over um, by law in Germany is surely the way that football should go across the world 
and be less of a business and more of a sport than it used to be. Tis Plenty is a great initiative, uh, and we've seen this week, you know, with the you know football without fans is nothing. The spirit of Shankly were really leading that in terms of you know we've got to highlight this as a, an issue. If if this if this doesn't happen, people are going to be discouraged from going. We're not going to be able to engage the younger generation. And therefore, there won't be that, that that consistent fan base because people will be reluctant to go because they just literally can't afford it.